Millwork estimating can be tough. You never know what you're up against until you open a set of plans. One project is simple plastic laminate work with some trim and the next is a multi-year, multi-phase project with lead-based materials, wood trellis ceilings, 200 suites, and a 100-foot check desk like you've never seen before. <laughs> and of course, seemingly a 100 alternates. The assistant estimator for Millwork is just what you need to simplify these challenges and make the most of your estimates. It has pre-designed modules for cabinets, countertops, moldings, and a special custom section so you can create even more. Items such as paneling, reception desks, windows, shelving, doors, really anything that you can build or supply. We're going to introduce you to two of the most popular modules in the Assistant Estimator, uh, the Casework Auto Entry and the Custom Auto Entry. So let's get started with the takeoff. What we have here is a series of buttons, all designed for estimating your architectural millwork and taking off uh, casework items. First, we'll take off some casework, and we'll do that through our casework auto entry tool. And what you see here is a three part system here. In this area, we have an elevation takeoff grid. And in this area, we have cabinetry information. And in this area down below, we have countertop information. So the way this works is we're just going to put in a rim number here. You can always put in as much or as little information as you want in the uh, information at the top. And now in cabinet information, what we're going to do is choose the type of cabinetry we want to use, and we're going to select a cabinet style. Now what you're looking at is the system populated the way it comes off of a default installation. So if I wanted to take off a two-door, two-drawer base cabinet, for instance, I would select that. It populates all these controls with my defaults. Now after that, I can make any adjustments that I want to make. So if I want to change the sizing, the depth, the number of shelves, pullouts, vertical partitions, and so forth, well, you get the idea. All I do is make an adjustment. Then I click it right into my elevation takeoff grid in the location that I want it to go in. And when I do that, it automatically backs out my scribes and finished ends under the assumption that the next cabinet I enter is not going to need that. And I just work right through a cabinet takeoff, maybe a three drawer base unit, and maybe that needs to be 22 inches wide instead of 18 inches wide, and maybe something like a, uh, a one door base cabinet. And in this particular base cabinet, let's, uh, let's say that we've got maybe four shelves, and maybe let's put a finished end on this and we'll click it into place. Now, as I take off my cabinetry that you see here, my countertop area is automatically trying to ascertain what we need. So it's increasing the length, the depth, the splash layouts and everything based off of my takeoff. So from my takeoff now, I can go in and choose the type of countertop I want to use. In this case, maybe a solid surface countertop. And I would click it right into my takeoff grid. And now what we'll do is we'll just add this to our takeoff and click add and end here. And here is all my detailed information. Here over to the left, you can see all the pricing and those are dynamic prices, which means that if anything about that cabinet changes, it's going to automatically change the labor and the material processes involved in that cabinet. And so as we go through the various details that we have here, uh, any kind of edits that we want to do, for instance, this cabinet that we had four shelves in, we have $412. Now, if I want to edit that item, I just click the button here and maybe set it back to just one shelf again. And now you can see that the price ratcheted back to $351. So these things are totally editable and they will change materials and labor as I make selections. But there are a lot of ways of editing these cabinets um, in addition to the editing that we just did here and changing the number of shelves or some takeoff property like that. These cabinets are all based off of what we call specifications in the system. And what a cabinet specification looks like is we'll just call up the cabinet spec that we're using. 
and this is what a cabinet spec looks like. It has tabs for various different portions of a job and we are allowed to go in and change anything we want about it. For instance, this is a pre-finished birch cabinet and if I go here to my finishes, I can see that the exterior on my finish is a stain finish and then we're putting a clear finish on our drawer boxes and, and uh, large drawer boxes as well as well as some stain finish on our toe base and on any horizontal trim that we may take off. So in here we can make any kind of adjustments we want to make. We can move right over here to the finishes for instance and choose that uh, instead of a clear finish here we want to put in a stain finish on the inside as well as the outside. So we'll select the stain finish, we'll double click it right into place and we'll click OK and what you'll see is a change in price for this project because now we're using a different type of finish on the inside of these cabinets. In addition to changing out individual portions of a spec, we also have the ability to do what we call swapping specs. So I might swap out this pre-finished flush birch that I'm using right now and swap it in for a pre-finished birch with a melamine interior. And I will say swap and end and it will go in and change the job accordingly and now you see that the price of the job has reduced commensurate to the material and labor adjustments that we just made. 